some bills. J Dog back. Six AM as always, goddammit. To answer some devils. So let's see what the devil's got asking. We're pulling up a new fucking video too. One from we're two weeks ago behind now, goddammit. And it's the goddamn these Pantera pansies just keep on coming, brah brah. That they do. That they do. And holy shit, 1.3k views. Yeah, but the more holy shit is 208 comments. So fuck yeah, let's see what the fuck's in there, devils. 208, that's quite a fucking bit. I need to, but it's like a 120 or so, I consider that good. Uh, the horn spawn 666. Definitely comments several fucking times. When I hear, when I hear you say people poke fun at you for being in shape, my immediate thought is they're either ignorant or jealous. When I see somebody with a physique like that, I see hard work and self-discipline. It also further goes to show how fucked society is when people sh shame something positive. Thanks for that, Rob. Rob. No, yeah, that's a hundred percent, dude. When I, whenever people poke fun, and I, there's people that I know, or yeah, I'll, I'll just name names anonymous, whether I'm related to or not related to, or know on some type of other level. There's definitely ones that I do that I know personally that they do it from time to time, or at least have in the past. It's because there's, there's negative people, dude. It's it's that old saying, "Misery loves company," and it's because they have to make excuses for themselves. Put this way, nobody puts that, like, what do you do, what's next? You go walk around making fun of somebody that's a millionaire? Like, what, it just, it doesn't make any fucking sense. They're doing it for them, the reason they're doing it is because they're making excuses for themselves to make themselves feel fucking better, because they already feel like shit, they're already fucking miserable deep down inside, uh, even though they sell you, no, I'm not miserable, yeah, you are, dude, because any, anyone that's constantly negative and shit, there's nobody that's truly happy inside. I guarantee you can ask any psychiatrist or somebody that studies the human brain and shit, and knows way more about this than I do, that Someone that's constantly negative about things, putting shit down and talking shit, talking shit about other people. Nobody that's truly happy is doing that. They just don't. They they they, they just flat out don't. So um, when I hear that, I'm just like, oh, this is just a miserable, dismal fucking person. Which, a quite frankly, I don't want anywhere near my ass, anyways. Because if you're negative, you're just talking shit and just 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 ripping on crap left and right. I'm not talking about butt busting balls. Like I'm I'm all for busting balls. That's funny. You know what I mean? Like I like to joke around. You know, hell, I even make fun of myself. You know what I mean? I mean, I tease Lindsay, I make fun of her, you know, but it's all in good fun and jokes, you know what I mean? Like, you can make fun of me, it's all good. But when it's just, like, kind of maliciously put out there and just bashing and just putting people down and nothing positive to say and just like to see, it's because they're, 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 they're miserable. And I don't, I, don't want, I don't want those fucking people anywhere near my ass anyways, so they can poke fun all they want. As a matter of fact, I kind of like it when they do because, like, let's say I'm meeting the person kind of for the first time or maybe second, third time, or I don't know them that well. But once they show that card, they reveal to me, oh, this is the type of person that they are. Now I know. Good. Keep them out of my life. They're never, they're, they'll never be invited in my house. And, uh, cause like things like that, they, like they, I have events in my house and shit. And those type of people, they don't get invited. They never do. They know who I am though. And they've never gotten an invite. And that's for that reason. That's why. So, um, so it's a good thing. All right. I know. Cool. Keeping them as far away from me as fucking possible when I can. So it's a good thing to me. It's kind of like a, uh, it's like a caution sign or a fucking watch for deer crossing sign <laughs> on the highway. It gives you a heads up. Keep this motherfucker away from me because I don't want him anywhere near my ass. Life Eternal, does HHR license the huge shirt selection on the site or do you guys buy the shirts from other distros? Uh, yeah, no, we don't license them just because um, the cost would get them for them. It wouldn't make sense to. It's the, the, the retail rate is, it's only a few dollars more than what we get them for. So whether we press them ourselves for like our own releases, like the bands that we work with and shit, or we do it, we trade merchandise for others, like, like let's say like Angel Course, for example, those shirts, we trade it with Osmos. You know what I mean? Or whether we traded shirts and LPs or whatever, without the point system, or or we wholesale from other um, distros, labels, whatever. That's how we get them. So that's why we don't uh, license them as opposed to like for our CDs, LP releases that we did, the markup is higher, so you're able to do that. You can wholesale them, shit like that. Ninox111, will HHR ever release a split with Last Days of Humanity and Regurgitate? That's a killer record. I wouldn't be against it. Uh, and you Regurgitate, especially the early shit, is fucking awesome. I never heard anything about Regurgitate I don't like, but basically, um, what was the second full length? Uh, Oh, the fuck, uh, the fucking, uh, the penis on the cover, um, drawn up like what's called. But anyways, uh, I liked, I remember that one sounding a lot like Exhumed Slaughter Cult, which was cool, but it's kind of like, it wasn't, it wasn't regurgitate for me. 
And then from there on out, I just didn't really pay too much attention. But I have a handful of seven inches, and I love the first full, like the effortless regurgitation. As a matter of fact, I would love Hells to do an LP of that with the uh, Relapse Records CD cover. Because there is an LP of it with the there was an original cover. And I have an LP version of that, which is a totally different cover. But I don't think a vinyl pressing has ever been pressed with the uh, Relapse Records CD cover. Because I like both covers. The original cover is awesome, and I like the Relapse cover. And since there's never been a vinyl pressing cover of that, and, and uh, the, the fucking vinyl on it is long out of print, so Devil's Word, that's that's one of the fucking greatest score grind records ever. Uh, the the regurgitate, Effortless Regurgitation, a Bright Web Blood. Um, so Last Days of Manny, Regurgitate Split, yeah, I'd, I'd be, I'd, we'd be into it. Uh, and now that we're, we've done two Last Days releases and shit, it's not out of the question. Not out of the question. And hopefully, so A, We'd be into it, and actually, I think that'd be an awesome idea. I would, I would actually love to do it, to be honest with you. And that would put us in fucking contact with the Gertz We've never done anything with them, and uh, I would ask about that CD. But I don't know if it'd be relapse would be the hurdle because of them they're licensing and they don't really want to license out stuff out. At least that's what um, they told us about about eight years ago now because they started doing everything themselves. So <laughs> that'd be funny. What it'll be is we'll ask relapse, and they'll still be no, and then six months later they'll come out, and they'll do it. It's like. <laughs> Great, just all our idea that you wouldn't, wouldn't have done unless I threw it out and told you about it. Brutal131, any chance you can give some insight on AI slash estrogen blockers? Are they safe when taken correctly? Uh, that, that's a random question thrown in here, but uh type of questions I like and shit that I know quite a bit about. Yeah, I mean, if you need them, if you have high estrogen levels, absolutely. I would, I would, they're very beneficial. As a matter of fact, one of J Dog's fucking protocols, if you have low testosterone levels, instead of just jumping automatically on TRT, if you get the full fucking blood work protocol, you can actually solve the problem at, at some times with just an AI, a non harsh one too, like uh, aromasin, also known as XMS stain. Um, so if, you're, if your total testosterone levels are low, but your estradiol levels are high, you don't need to take testosterone. Basically, what's happened, the testosterone that you're um, producing, it's converting all over to estrogen. So we'd put you on a dose of uh, aromasin. It'd be a low dose, and it would drastically lower the, um, it would block the fucking aromatization of testosterone and estrogen. Those testosterone levels would go way up. Estradiol levels would come down. I noticed in the last five years in the bodybuilding world, these fucking idiots are coming out, and they're talking about AIs, and they're the worst thing, and they're harsh, and shit like that. It's like, Worse than trend, worse than trend and wind straw combined and shit. You guys are fucking retards. And it's just, I think there's set, this is coming up as number one as a marketing, like, oh, I figured something out and I'm so fucking smart and bringing something new to the table, like, like we have to reinvent the goddamn wheel. And part of it, some of these guys justifying what they're taking, like, oh, see, I don't take those or I take them very sparingly. And those are actually worse. For no, a lot of these anabolics are taking are way fucking worse for you. I mean, uh, last I checked, fucking trend is a goddamn FDA approved. Romatase inhibitors are. Um, it just makes no goddamn sense. So that was been a trend, but only in the last five years, that'll go away. Only retards say that. What they do is they talk about all the negatives of low estrogen and they say, see, this is why these AIs are so bad for you. Yeah, we're not. That's if you crash your estrogen levels. You don't take a dose that crashes them. You put it in the fucking optimal range. <laughs> yes. They'll talk about like osteoporosis, joints aching, uh, muscle tears, fucking, uh, harsh lipid panels. It fucks up your lipids. Yeah, if you're crashing your fucking est estrogen levels, because you don't want them in the gutter, you want them in the optimal fucking range. If you know what the fuck you're doing, they're just re regurgitating the side effects of what low estrogen is, not the side effect of the drug. So they're they're totally safe. They're not liver toxic. They're not fucking renal toxic. There's no harshness to the fucking uh, stomach lining. I mean, there's things like Novodex and Clomid, which are the thing with the floaters and the eyes and shit like that. And some people of years and years, most people don't even get that, but some do. There's that's because of the estrogen receptors in the fucking eyes, and it's just a, a blocker. You could run the risk of that. With well, something like aromasin, for example, if you needed it, you, the dose that you need to keep your estrogen levels in, in check, um, safe as fuck, man. Not going to harm you at all. And if you actually need it, need it, you're going to be kicking ass more in life because high estrogen levels uh, lead to, uh, for, for, start, for starters, it's carcinogenic, so it leads to a lot of cancers. And high estrogen combined with high DHT, which you probably have that too if your estrogen levels are high, uh, that's the biggest culprit, uh, prostate cancer. The two of those elevated is what uh, stimulates prostate cancer. Just so you fucking know, because for years it was believed by doctors there was just high DHT levels, dihydrotestosterone, which is not true. It's the combination of the two. So, yeah, if you need it, you take them, and they're totally fucking safe. But yes, a lot of harsh side effects if you crash in the fucking gutter, which means your, your dosage is too fucking high, and you monitor it through blood work. 
But once you get your dose set, after about six weeks, you play around, up it, lower it, wherever you need it, get in it, check your bloods, make sure it's staying stabilized. Okay, just stay on that and do that. You're fine. You're good to go. Well, yeah, it's kind of annoying because uh, it's funny you asked that question because it's something I know quite a bit about. And it's the last five years I know it's ongoing trends are just fucking more retards in this goddamn social media world. Just like all the, all these nutrition experts, I'm sorry, they, they just think they, they got to go away. All this hippie ass fucking shit coming out in the last seven to eight years is beyond, beyond, beyond fucking annoying. And it's, and it's fucking uh, just confusing the shit out of the people that don't know any fucking better. Bunch of fucks that just need to go away. Oh, uh, Human Brisket, the song Backstreet Kids from Sabbath is awesome, and I don't think there's a live version either. Oh, yeah, so did you guys ever see the uh, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath? Did you ever fucking prove me wrong? Did they ever play the song Sabbath Bloody Sabbath live in the 70s? I'm talking about that comeback shit. I heard it yeah, in the 90s, they finally did. In the 70s, J Dog says, this is what J Dog says, prove me wrong. Black Sabbath never played the song. Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, live. Probably my favorite Black Sabbath song. If you can prove otherwise, please send it to me. And I'm not saying that sarcastically, like literally, because I, I, I actually want to know. Because um, I could not find any. And I've looked at tons and tons of bootleg recordings that people had, uh, like lists of shit, and it's not on anyone. None. And I asked a couple of people, and they're like, yeah, fuck, I guess I've never seen a set list with it. Like people that were even around back then. So if you know something, I'd be thinking that'd be really cool. And especially if somebody had an audio, I would love to hear it. Question, how did Hell's Headbangers get incantation and shitfucker to wear their face mask for the site? Any stories behind that? No, I remember when they wanted uh, the face mask. I think John, for incantation, he wanted to do it. Uh, I think he just requested that. So when we got them in, we sent them whatever, one or two copies of each. They photographed it, sent it to us, and then it was posted. So I think that's what, how it was done. Because the face mask, at the time, it was during all this COVID wimpness. And I'm not going to lie, Hell's Headbangers kind of like jumped on the wagon. Okay, yeah, I guess we can capitalize on this. Not because we're just looking at it as a business move. It's because bands and people were asking, you sell face masks, you sell face masks. And then bands like uh, Angel Corpse, Karis Force, Black Witchery, um, Incantation, they're all asking. It's like, they're like they wanted to, they, they, they're saying us, we want to do masks. And customers were asking too, because we're talking about the time of here, like March 2020, March, April, May, when literally you were forced to wear a mask. So people are buying them, which made sense. I actually had a few bad ones myself. Uh, like my, like Lindsay went out and got me some. I was like, when we were forced to wear a mask to even go to the store, why not wear something out? Like Lindsay got us a couple. She got me like an obituary cause of death and shit. So what well, we you have, you need one again there. Why not get other than a stupid medical one? So it made sense from the metal heads, you know, they got theirs. So yeah, I guess it wasn't our intent. Like, let's just capitalize on this. But at the same time we did because everyone was, people, customers were asking, wanted them. We really want, fuck, do you sell masks? Because I need a mask, God damn it. And all, this is all around the world. And then the bands were saying they wanted them too. So, well, fuck it. I mean, people are out. May as well do it. So it was at that time. And just whatever reason, I mean, I guess they just wanted to um, wear them for the photos. I don't remember what the exact reason was. Pretty sure it was Eric in contact with them with doing it. I don't know if they demanded we want photos of them. Or if I, I want to say, and I could be wrong, Eric said it'd be cool to see like, hey, John, if you wear the photo or the band members, whatever, wear them. It'll look cool for the photo. Maybe that's how it went down. Don't call me that. But I do remember when it all happened. I just... Again, like when things are happening in time, you're not thinking much of it. But kind of looking back on it, just the whole mask thing. And you know, we, were, we were selling quite a few fucking masks. Back then. Now, we're like, don't sell shit for masks. But um, for that first six months, we, we sold a lot of masks. Um, and I understand why. Like I said, Lindsay bought some for us, too. Because, you know, before we even had ours. Because you, you needed one, you know. So you may as well have something you like. Gorehound, love to hear some funny concert stories, J Dog. I've personally seen some crazy stuff and I'm only 19. God damn, 19. Fuck, man, that's fucking crazy. Makes me feel like a goddamn old man. It's just not because when I hear 19, I'm like, okay, guys, 19. It's just when I put in perspective what year you were born. You're born, what's like 03 or whatever? 03, 02, somewhere around there. You know, I graduated 03 and I like a lot of some of my favorite shows were between 98 and 03. So you're, you're just not even alive yet for a lot of those. Um, People ask me that, and I told a couple, and I know you watched the, uh, who's Layla Lover? No, G Gorehound. I know you comment all the time, and I'm pretty sure you've been watching since day one. So you probably heard some of my stories, but honestly, I forget the stories unless something comes up about a band, and I remember it. But I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything crazy, stuff that are cool stories about, but uh, 
nothing ever pops in my mind. I draw blanks until somebody brings we just just got out of the topic. You know what I mean? So um yeah, nothing is but I like, yeah, when you say you saw crazy shit, I guess I'd be ask you is what did you see that was crazy? And I guess that depends on your fucking definition of crazy. Now, crazy to me, which I wasn't there, some of the shit I heard about Maryland, guy jumping off a building. I never fucking seen that. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Uh autopsy shitting on stage and shit. I mean, that's I don't know if that's crazy, but a little fucking weird or maybe unnecessary. But hey, it's a show. I'll give them that. Uh anything goes in my book, as long as you're not fucking hurting anybody, fucking uh, I'm I'm for anything. You know what I mean? Um, not really what I'd be into wanting to watch, but um Something different, right? Uh, that uh, that can maybe enter the crazy catalog. I don't know if I call that crazy, but um, I can see why somebody would. Nothing like that. Not that I can. Uh, yeah, I don't think anything crazy, but some cool shit over the years, and some of which I've told, and some of which I'm I'm forgetting until it gets reminded of. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'd, ever, I'd find anything I'd consider crazy. Hell, Stephen Maggle, best tease of flesh release. It's got to be gradually melted. You know, I I, li- I recently listened to gradually melted again in the last probably about three months ago, and every time that fucking thing holds up, that record is fucking great. The only reason I don't put in the best is just because it's only four songs. The thing is, if it was a full length, because I always say trading pieces is my favorite. Gradually Metal it probably would be my favorite if it was a full length. I just love how the drums sound. I love how everything sounds just heavy as fuck and catchy as fuck. Fucking great. But since it's not a full length, I'll put it that. But I, yeah, I, again, still need those fucking deeds out. I'm going to gradually meld a 12 inch L, mini LP. I'd be all over that, goddammit. Preferably with the original cover art, too. Not that I thought that the, uh, there's actually two other, there's three covers for it. There's the original, then there's the other one, which kind of had like the cooler cover, in my opinion, which is melting, but it was a second pressing. And there's the third pressing, which is the one that's around now. I don't think any of them suck. It's just the original would be cool just because nostalgic reasons. You know what I mean? But, uh, oh, yeah, dude, I fucking love that shit. The first four Deeds of Flesh, like I said. Marco Legion was the one I kind of cut off where I like that one. That was my last one that I like and I own. Um, but especially the first four of Path of Weekend Down. I mean, I, I love that crap. But, I, I mean, I grew up on that stuff. And for me, as far as I consider Deeds of Flesh basically like third generation death metal and that brutal stuff. And of that generation, third generation, the brutal style, they're one of the kings for sure in the early days because then they kind of got – I don't want to say that they ever sucked. I'm sure they never sucked as musicians or anything like that. It just it just wasn't the same. It just didn't sound the same. Like I I remember hearing a, a album the album that was like maybe 2000 I don't know let's say 12 or something around that era 10 12 something like that and I heard it much much later. I'm like this is Deeds of Flesh. I'm like what the fuck and again not that it was bad music or that it was like sounded like a Pantera album or anything. It was still death metal. I was like this this literally just doesn't sound anything like Deeds of Flesh to me. It just it sounds like a different band. Um, that's all. So. Well, first four, let's say even first five. I, I, I've been a big fan ever since I was, I think I first heard Deeds when I was, I'm pretty sure I was 14. Fuck, 23 years of my goddamn life. I've been a huge fan. They still hold up for me. Genghis Ghost, I was never able to get into death metal for some reason. I've always been a black metal guy. Hey, nothing wrong with that, bra, bra. And that's what you're into. Stay true to what you're into. Don't try to fucking force yourself into something that you're not. You know, if you're a black metal guy and that's what you love, is it? Stay in it and stay until you fucking die and stay true to that. Fuck what everyone else thinks. You don't need to be a death metal guy to be a metal guy. Be a black metal guy. Like what you like. That's the way I like it. I, I give respect for people that are true to themselves and true to their ways, not fucking following trends and trying to please others or try to fit in to be cool. You're cool for being original. Being an original and an in- individual. That's what makes you cool. Not just following the fucking crowd, the pack, the sheep, following them up the fucking hill, go around the motherfucking hill, be an individual, fuck the hill, fuck the herd, fuck the sheep. <laughs> One guy's asking around, I don't even know what the fuck he means though. I don't know if he's trying to be funny, but uh, I don't get the question at all. Here we go. Here's goddamn few videos in a row. I'm, I'm liking this guy a lot. Carl, Carl House Satan. Yes, perfect. Two questions every time. God damn, he gives me double questions. We'll make this last one goddamn one, too. Uh, hey, Jade, all goddamn it. Question one, out of your favorite genres, which obvious bands are you supposed to worship, but in fact you couldn't give two shits about? Oh, man, that's a goddamn. This guy, has, he, he's hanging out with Ricky Jones. He has some of the best questions. Death metal. Start with that. Bands you're supposed to worship. 
I don't know about they consider worship, but bands I kind of give a shit about is Pestilence, other than the demos. I do like the demos for years. I didn't even know I would care about those until they got reissued. Was it Vic Records put them out? I was like, the demos, I thoroughly enjoyed. Albums, I haven't listened to a lot, but I remember consuming Impulse. And so when I listened to them, I'm like, I'm bored. Remember not liking them for the most part at all. Um, who's another death metal band you're supposed to worship? Autopsy. Other, I do worship Severed Survival, but Mental Funeral, Accidents, People, people think you have to worship those. Don't give a shit about whatsoever. I think it's respectable, and I respect them. It's better than Pantera, but uh, I can get two fucking shit. Boring as piss to me. So there's two examples for that. Black Model. Supposed to worship for Black Model, but I could care less about. I know some people might be offended because they're going to put them as war metal. That's not black metal, but it's first band to pop my mind. It's the same goddamn people that like them always generally like black metal. Let's put them in there. Goddamn is blasphemy. Blasphemy does nothing for me. They're original, cool as fuck, awesome image. I respect the shit out of them. Um, the original sound for their time. It's just when I put it on, it just it just does nothing for me. It doesn't suck. Um, it's just it's just background for it. Just, I just can't get into it. Like I, I don't I, I can't like Eric Guitar and jamming out. Fuck yeah, I'm banging the head, tapping the foot. I just I just can't get into it. it just doesn't. It's just like background going over my head. You know what I mean? So blasphemy. Um, let's say say thrash metal. Thrash metal. Uh. Thinking of bands I don't give a fuck about, but that nobody does that they're not worship bands. People like so you have to like. Mm, I know there's fucking definitely somebody in there. Kind of, I mean they're not, but I mean kind of testament. I would say testament because they're, they're a big band. I don't dislike them. And some songs here and there when I was well, it's a pretty good song, but as a whole, an album as a whole, and a band as a whole, I would say them. Don't hate them. Don't have anything against them. I've heard some songs that are kind of catchy, but for the most part, don't care about them and. I guess is in the whole metal scene, especially if you put the mainstream metal scene in there, they would be, and they've been around a long time. Kudos to them, respect to them. Um, I just they didn't do nothing for me, so let's let's go with them since they're coming to my mind, and uh, let's just go with those three styles. So you know, we keep going on fucking ever and ever and ever. And heavy metal, there's a f heavy metal, there's a fuckload of bands. Uh, who and you got a fucking uh, question two. What were those pansy ass sh <laughs> short crop shirts old school bands used to wear? Pansy ass short crop shirts old school bands used to wear. Uh, give me some uh, scene bands such as Obituary, Morbid Angel, Bathory, and Hellhammer wear those. Always baffle me, haha, -ha, as it's really an unmanly look. <laughs> Surely you must have an opinion on those. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of picturing like a fr maybe Tom Warrior wearing something like that, but uh, Obituary and shit did. I mean, what, what I'm thinking, the first thing that's popping in my mind. Is kind of like those belly shirts. You, remember, you guys, oh, what is it like? Maybe like Rocky Four and Stallone's wearing it in one of the scenes, like one of his training scenes. Maybe it was a Rocky Three. I mean, is, is that what you're talking about? Where kind of like it shows the belly a little bit. Um, didn't Bulldozer have something like that on? Is that what you're talking about? Because I don't remember. The reason I bring that up, that's what it, that's what it sounds like in your description. But I don't recall Obituary and did you say Morbid Angel too? Maybe I just never. You said Bathory. What the Bathory? Seems is Morbid Angel, Bathory, though. I mean, I kind of remember Tom G, but I don't remember Obituary, Morbid Angel, or Bathory, or, but maybe I just overlooked it. I don't know. But that's what popped in my mind is the description. I mean, ugh, I wouldn't wear it. It just seems kind of, if that's what you're talking about, fruity. You know what I mean? I'd be kind of like, why is my fucking stomach hanging out? You know what I mean? Um, if you are going to do it, you better be fucking ripped. I mean, um, I mean, I guess I could get away with it because, yeah, I definitely have full abs now, especially now that I'm, I'm getting towards the end of my diet. I'm very, very lean as we speak, but I still wouldn't. I would just feel fruity and douchey, and I just I just wouldn't do that. Uh, I don't even like uh, my shirts tight. I like my shirts loose, as you guys know. So I don't even like, when I wear tight clothes, I feel like I'm walking around like an exploding Gumby or something, just like a fucking idiot, like you're trying to show off or something. It just seems stupid and like, like, like asking for attention, which I don't want. Um, so... Yeah, I would have wear it, but uh, I, is that what we were talking about? So if that's what we we're talking about, that's my opinion. Fruity and fucking asking for attention, and at the very fucking least, you better be fucking shredded wearing it, because otherwise, we just got a big beer belly hanging out. That just looks not only that is not only is it fruity and fucking weird. It's 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 it, it, tuck that shit in, bra bra. Nobody wants to see that fucking nasty ass crap. So that would be my take on it. 
So, yeah, hopefully I answered that question, man, because I'm, I'm not even sure if we're on the same topic because yeah, I can't think of fucking more Angel and shit. Man. Maybe it's someone looked at. I just wasn't paying attention. I have no idea. But uh, like I said, I kind of pictured Tom Warrior wearing it. But, uh, yeah, I just remember I remember guys seeing wearing sleeveless shirts and shit the sleeves ripped off. But other than that, yeah, that must just went over my head. But the only thing, I, the way you describe it is the Stallone thing. And, yeah, I kind of, I wouldn't wear it. But, so that's kind of my take on it. So that's it for this one, Devils. Comments, questions, concerns, and any type of questions. And goddamn, like, fucking house Satan, goddamn it. <clears throat> Get on board with him. He has some fucking good ones. Every fucking video lately, the last few that I did. So, anyways, put them in there, goddammit, and I'll get them answered bright and early. Later, goddammit.